Thanks very much. Yeah, so um, I'm Justin. I come from here. This is Cambridge. It's a um, small tech village in the UK. Um, uh, I'm the security leader at Docker, at, um, at least. Um, uh, I maintain it, as you said. Um, and it's been a bit weird last week, so just, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So, yes, I still work at Docker. Yes, Docker still exists. Yes, we are doing all the fun bits still. Um, and we're excited to work with the open source community. Um, for this talk, we've ha I've had a lot of discussions leading up to it um, with uh, Steve from Microsoft who's here, the um, EC2 registry team, uh, Justin Kapos who's also here, uh, and a bunch of other people. And um, this talk is kind of some suggestions and my thoughts about what's going on and, and, and it's not a committed roadmap or anything and we, I'll talk a bit more about that towards the end. But um, you know, it's, it's things I've been thinking about. Just to kind of frame it, I'm going to just mention supply chain security. Um, hopefully, some of you went to other talks and uh, about that we've had earlier on. Um, but you know, back in the day, security s sort of seemed simpler. You know, you had um, you had hardware firewalls and things like that. And but if all your infrastructure is code, then you can com if you can commit any kind of code, then you can change any of the infrastructure and break any kind of security guarantees you have. So attackers have realized that actually attacking the code that's shipped is really quite compelling. Um, and so how you actually secure your code from commit to deployment becomes really important. And um, in the container ecosystem, this is incredibly important as well. And so, so Notary is part of the kind of one of the pieces of tooling in this area. Um, there's also um, the Intoto project, which is a new sandbox project, which um, hopefully you went to some talks on as well, which is also in this area. And there's a lot of interest in this area in cloud native deployments. And just to give a very, very short introduction to Tough and Notary, there's an intro session on Notary tomorrow as well. And hopefully you went, maybe you went to the Tough one. Um, originally, Tough came back from looking at the um, Linux package repositories, really, and what the kind of security issues with them were, um, how you could attack those and, and basically install code on people's computers that would lead to compromise. Um, so obviously, things like serving up fake packages that are completely not what they say. Or, um, but other things are more complicated, saying like, so things like getting someone to install an old vulnerable version of a package instead of the current one by lying about what its name is and things like that, or just telling them there are no updates and they don't need to update when you know there's been a security issue. Um, and there's a whole set of these. There's, there's a set of tough papers, if you look them up, um, that on the Update Framework website that cover these. And it's, a, it's a really interesting. And just um, just having... TLS or signature or something does not really stop those problems. You need to actually sign a collection of items and you need to re-sign regularly to allow freshness checks to stop these freeze attacks. So um, um, basics of TUF are, you know, you have a kind of, the sort of viewpoint of, of TUF is that you're trying to update your software. You can see the package repository. You're, you, um, pull metadata from it, look and see what's going on. You have a public key that um, you trust to give you signatures, um, and you can validate, um, you can validate these, these um, keys. And then there's a, set of, uh, there's, a set of, there's a set of keys which are designed to um, basically allow you to delegate and update different signing keys. Um, I mentioned Intoto briefly as well, which Intoto is a kind of different part of the supply chain, which answers questions about how code was built, who built it, and was it, did it go through the right process? And that's um, really there to kind of help you uh, stop people attacking stuff during the build, build and deploy, before deployment process. Um, so this, is, this talks really about the things we want to fix and the lessons we've learned from Notary as, as it's been built and deployed in the last few years. Um, Notary was originally a project from Docker, um, implementing TUF um, in 2015, um, and which is, I was not involved at the beginning. I, was, I just joined a little bit after, around when the launch was. Um, 
and the idea was that you know packages. Uh, you know, the, the tough was about the Linux packages, but obviously containers are kind of like packages, so let's use the same model, which seems great. It was donated to CNCF along with tough specification in 2017. Um, but back when it was designed, the container world was very different from it is now. Containers in production were not really very big. Um, we didn't really know exactly what they, how they're going to be used. And I think, you know, although the basic idea was great. We made a bunch of design mistakes at the time that I think we need to fix for a kind of 2.0 version. Um, some of the issues now are around um, usage. I mean, I think, you know, Notary is not used as much as we would like it to be. People um, find it difficult to use for various user, there's various usability issues. Um, there are some implementation and design issues that are kind of weird that we'll talk about. Um, it's difficult to understand what's going on and observe, you know, if uh, it's actually hard to see um, the metadata and what's actually going on, so it's kind of hard. Um, and it's not terribly modular or anything. So um, I want to talk about this kind of registry native idea as well. Um, uh, when when we were as part of building um, Docker back in the day, we built this thing called a registry. And a registry is effectively a content addressable storage mechanism. Um, it, with, with, so it's a basically, you address objects by their SHA-256 hash, um, and then there's a way of adding tags. So it's, it's really similar to Git, apart from the fact that it's designed for really large sets of data. Um, we didn't make the mistake of using SHA-1 because it was a bit later on. And, um, uh, but it's, conceptually, it's, it's, you, it's very similar design to Git. And, um, and it's, a kind of nice, uh, it's a kind of nice model. Um, I think that um, there's a whole lot of guarantees about, I mean, one of the reasons it works is that containers are designed to be immutable objects, and the immutable objects don't change their content. So addressing them by that content hash makes a lot of sense, because every time you pull it, you know you're getting the right, the right bits. Um, there's a bunch of ongoing work in, in actually expanding it, not just to be container images, but other things like Helm charts and all sorts of other items, and, the, and this and CNAB and uh, artifacts and, and all sorts of things. So there's a real um, bunch of work around expanding the registry kind of usage use cases recently, which is really cool. Um, there's a set of um, JSON objects that are in the registry that basically describe the actual bits and how to use them. So things like the layers in a Docker image and um, bits of metadata and so on. Um, and then there's actually a hierarchical kind of layer set of these things. So for example, when we introduced um, support for multiple architectures in Docker, um, different, you know, different platforms like Windows and ARM containers and things like that, we added another layer of indirection. So you could choose which of the, uh, which of the actual images you wanted. Um, and uh, w there's a kind of, um, there become some sort of ways in which people use registries. So for example, they tend to be very archival. People don't tend to delete stuff much from registries. Um, so, because one of the advantages of is, you know, if containers is reproducibility, and if you want to go back and see what you were running six weeks ago or six months ago, you can do it if you keep everything. Um, and then there was some kind of bugs, I think, in the implementations. So um, it wasn't, even though it's content addressable, often clients, when they pull and push things, will just parse the JSON and then push back a new bit of JSON, which could, because JSON doesn't have a um, fixed form in general, sometimes will be different and change the hash, and that's really annoying. And so there's some sort of bugs in the, in the ecosystem as well. Um, but registries were built originally without a sort of signing model. I mean, um, Git acquired a signing model over time. Um, so when Notary was introduced, because there was nothing built into the registry specification, um, it was built effectively as a sidecar that sits alongside your registry, and it provides it has a it sits there with a separate database, um, and it gives you the signature metadata, and that models. Uh, been 
really kind of inconvenient in many ways. For a start, um, most registries don't actually run an H3 server. So Docker Hub does and Azure does now. But um, for example, um, the AWS registries and most, most other registries don't actually run notary, so you can't sign anything if your registry decides not to support it. And that's really weird, because it means the functionality is not part of the registry, it's not native, it's not like, you know, I've signed this git commit, it's now in git, it's like I've signed this git commit, it's in some other files, and um, which are sitting somewhere else, and that would be really inconvenient, because you you know, you pull and push your Git repository all the time, and if you had to separately copy the signatures, it would be really, really annoying. But that's the situation we're in with um, with Notary, where you can you pull and push images, but the signatures don't come with them, and there's actually no easy API for pulling and pushing the signatures at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can pull them to check them, but you can't actually push new ones back e e easily to some other endpoint. So, one of the, so. I think one of the really important things is that we want native signing that's part of the in, inside the repository, and you can pull and push them. Um, so, um, um, so the, the most important part is actually signing content pieces. There's actually the other question about how you sign tags, which I'm not going to talk about much, because um, but Git allows you to sign both um, commits. Um, which is much like signing an image in, in many ways, and also tags, um, so that you can't move tags around and things like that. I'm not going to talk much about tag signing those, but they're in this talk, but there's, that's kind of important as well in some ways. Um, as a little diversion, uh, signing JSON is kind of weird and annoying, and um, um, tough, the tough spec just chose to use canonical JSON. Um, and canonical JSON is a standardized um, format for JSON where you decide exactly how it's laid out and how you order all the keys and things like that. Uh, what we found is that there's not a there's there's two different specs for canonical JSON, and I don't believe any of the implementations implement either of them correctly. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. He's tried. Yeah, and the problem is if we try and if you, if you if you accidentally make an error and you uh, decide that you've got a bug in your canonical JSON implementation, all your signatures then become invalid, which is really annoying. Um, there's a great blog post called How Not to Sign a JSON Object from Lasikora, um, which I recommend you read if you like um, this kind of problem. Um, but um, I think in a content addressed format, the best thing to do is externally sign blobs, so with a you know, um, basically have a detached signature and point at the thing you want to sign and say, I'm signing this thing, this is its hash, I'm just gonna sign that hash. And um, this seems to fit much better with the content address model because it means you don't have to um, mind about the canonicalization, you don't have to mind about um, anything else, you're, and you just, you're signing the content hash, which is what you really want to sign, um, and um, it, 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 you can, if you have a signature as a separate object in the registry that just points at the object you're signing, then you can, for example, do things like uh, give people the hash of just the object without the signature for compatibility if they don't understand signatures because you've got a separate thing to point at, which makes it easier for us to experiment with different signature formats. Um, detached signatures look something like this. This is kind of a kind of, um, you've got a list of signatures because you might want to sign things multiple times. Uh, each of them has some kind of key ID which tells you which key they are, which um, this is from, I mean, tough key ID is a, a hash of um, another set of things, but um, multiple, and then the contents of the actual signature, which is just a block of signature, we're just signing the hash, and then we have a, point, a normal kind of pointer that points at, in this case, an index file with this particular hash. Um, so this is kind of quite a clean model. It doesn't mean there's an extra kind of an extra fetch from the registry, but um, and we need to have some meta. We need to standardize some metadata so that we can put, do things like handle expiry. Fortunately, the tough formats all include that anyway. Um, and then we need um, 
with multiple, if you want multiple signatures, it's kind of easy. You can either sign at once or multiple times. You can, you can modify um, the signature later, or you can point another signature at the first signature if you want. Um, that's also, so you can kind of chain signatures if you want. Um, all those things are kind of valid strategies depending on how you want to use signatures. Um, and yeah, for backwards compatibility, you can do kind of weird things like have a manifest list that has um, points at a signature. Uh, which then points at another manifest list and say that back, uh, clients are told to ignore things they don't understand so they can ignore a signature. Um, so I think this kind of infrastructure fits quite well in the registry and I think that we can implement that relatively straightforwardly. Uh, there's been various issues on, on the OCI repo since 2016 about signatures. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I think um, OCI is not a very good place to define new things because their whole role is to standardize things that already exist. So um, my kind of view is that we need to sit down and implement these things, do the kind of IETF style rough consensus running code. Let's get this stuff working. Let's get everyone agreed that that's what we want and actually kind of ship stuff. Um, so. It's, it's really, um, yeah, I don't think we want to sit there and do a sort of standardization process first. We want to write some code, implement it, and check these things work, make sure they work for everyone's use cases, and so on. So that's kind of uh, sort of about how we sign things. Then obviously a lot of the um, stuff in um, Notary and Tough is about signing collections of things. So Tough signs collections of things because you're signing effectively the current set of packages so that you know what goes together, um, what things you need to mirror, what names things have. Um, registries are kind of, um, don't sort of natively work like this because things like, I mean, the, the, I mean, Docker Hub runs on S3 as a backend, and um, you know, S3 does not have consistent listings and things like that. So, you know, it, it's not a, um, it's not something that uh, falls naturally out of how you implement it, but it's um, that's kind of okay because we can we can still kind of push these documents into the registry that list all all the current contents at a particular time. So we can we can push effectively a snapshot as a data item into it. Um, so this is what a, um, you know this is what the manifest looked like in terms of um, implementation in terms of um, tough. So you basically again you just got a list of names, hashes, and, and sizes. Um, so just, you know, this is what we have in our, in our registry at this time, is the, this is the targets list and um, there. Um, but you kind of think, well, actually, there's something weird going on here, because actually when we have a registry, um, we don't tend to actually have, um, you know, if you look at, um, one set of files. We usually we um, we usually st stick different versions of the same thing in one in one registry repository, um, and where we have a bunch of things that need to be there at the same time, we um, we we create them as like a contentious tree of items and uh, and address them at once. So it's like why, why are we doing this kind of list of everything that's in the registry? Um, and basically, the answer is that when we designed Notary, we just did something really, really stupid. Um, so we made each, so things like Docker.io, Library, Debian, which is the Debian official images, we made that a single tough repository with its own root key. And that was just a really, really, really stupid idea, because that was the wrong thing to do. We should have made the whole of Docker Library a tough repository, because this is the collection of things that, that the maintainers of Docker Library are producing, and it's the set of stuff across that that's important. And um, we ended up, so we ended up with this kind of stupid strategy where we literally have hundreds and hundreds of root keys for all these separate things that we, that means that there's not actually a, um, a single root key for the whole of um, Docker Library. I think, so here's, here's the, um, we wrote some code in Docker Enterprise, which is kind of weird, that basically, for example, you could set it to trust everything in Docker Library. And this is the list of keys. 
And it's a really stupid list of keys that should be one key. It's also not one key for per repository because some of the people who are setting up these repositories use the same key from multiple repositories and some of them obviously didn't. Uh, so that was kind of weird as well because you expect that to be the same as the number of repositories, but I'm sure that's less. Um, and also, like, there's other weird things that we've done with usage of repositories that I think are just peculiar. So we've put all of, we put all of Debian into one repository because we haven't got any more, we didn't give ourselves any more hierarchy of namespaces. We kind of just gave ourselves, you know, library, I missed out library in that, but library slash Debian, but you can't have library slash Debian slash stretch uh, or something like that because we, almost every registry arbitrary cuts you off at two levels of hierarchy, which is, again, kind of stupid. And Tuff is, is set up to support hierarchical delegations, and it's really sensible. So you can, you can delegate to different people ability to push to different um, paths. But as we basically only have, like, we don't allow any paths in our um, Tuff repos in Notary because we, they're all at the top level. It's totally stupid, and the delegation feature is almost totally useless. Um, and so, um, and just confuses people, because they get all this stuff about delegations, and it's like, but what do I, I just give everyone everything, because it's the same repository, we don't have any names. So, um, I, believe, I believe some registries actually give you, allow you multi, longer paths, more hierarchy, but 99% of them don't. So that was, you know, other stupid things we did for no, for, I'm sure there were good reasons at the time, but they, it's, it's kind of wrong now. Um, and then for some reason we, I mean, everyone keeps all their old images, which is great. Um, costs us lots of money in Dog Hub, but hey. Um, <laughs> um, um, but it's what you want to do. Like, uh, it's really frustrating that like with Debian, they throw everything away from the main repository. And there is an archive in Debian, uh, but it's, you're not allowed to use it in production because it doesn't have much infrastructure supporting it. It is really kind of cool because you can set, so I say, I want what apt would have given me on the 3rd of September and it'll give it to you. So it's nice. Uh, I wish there was one for other distros. I don't think they have anything quite like that. Um, but we always sign all the stuff. We always, the automated signing infrastructure for re-signing snapshots in Notary just signs everything. So for some reason we, or, we sign all the old stuff that you should never install uh, because it's out of date, and that's all the, all the stuff in the repo. So again, the kind of way we use things and the way that we kind of design nursery when we didn't know how we were going to use things was all it's all kind of a bit wrong. Um, so um, there's a, there's other pieces as well. I mean, I think. Um, you know, so I think, anyway, Notary was kind of an ambitious project to get tough working when we didn't know how people were going to use things. Um, and so we made some mistakes at the time, and these are totally fixable. I think um, it's really quite exciting now that I think that um, we've had a bunch of community meetings about this actually recently, and um, we, um, we've talked to people and everyone agrees that yeah, signing is great, we want to do signing, let's get something that everyone can use that solves people's problems and um, fix some issues and, make, and actually roll this thing out so that um, it's um, used much more widely and, and um, as much, you know, at, you know solves, solves people's problems and doesn't have kind of weird design things that are kind of weird and it's native to registries and it's something that you can, that ever, everyone can, um, everyone can use easily. Um, so this is kind of becoming kind of the design phase that we're in really just beginning for Notary kind of 2.0, um, where, um, so we've, um, there's a lot of work to do around other pieces as well. I mean, I, this talk only covers some, some of the sort of technical issues that I think are, are wrong. It doesn't really talk about um, some of the, doesn't talk about all these, but some of the usability issues are related to the technical issues, like the having one root key for each repository. It just leads to enormous proliferation of root keys, which makes life annoying. So those that directly hinders usability. But there are um, there are other issues around the. Um, actually, one of the things we talked about this morning was why do you have to 
do the Docker content trust equals one environment variable. Well, that was actually just a temporary kind of hack because we were supposed to just turn it on for everything all the time. But it became clear it wasn't possible to turn it on for everything all the time because it was, gonna, it was not going to actually work. So, um, and then we were going to just turn it on for Docker official images. And, um, but then like, people were saying, but we want to move our official images into a, you know, our local repository and still know that the official images and still use signatures. And it's like, well, you're not going to be able to do that then. Um, and so there were all these kinds of issues as well. So, um, so there's, for example, no standard you know, way of using Notary in Kubernetes. Um, you know, there's a bunch of admission controllers that have their own kind of opinions, but um, it's not, you know, we once get to the stage where this is just integrated and everyone can just use it and it's easy and you're, um, it's, it's obvious where you get your keys from, how you get your keys, where you put your keys, what you have to check and what, you know, what the, what the model is and um, maybe, and, the kind of observability things, like um, it's really hard to know what's going on because for some reason we, you can't easily inspect the metadata um, always. It's kind of annoyingly, um, it's, it's, it's annoyingly impossible when, for example, it's difficult to do th anything when your if your certificate expires. That happened the other day with someone who's like trying to debug it and is like, well, we just give certificate expiration errors. That's not very helpful. <laughs> um, we can't check anything. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of little pieces of those kinds of usability pieces and just standardization that we need to um, do. Um, I have created a Notary V2 channel in the CNCF Slack as of this morning. Um, we've got a doc. Well, there will be some um, meeting schedule. We're planning some more meetings soon with um, probably in Seattle around the 12th of December is the current plan with, um, um, uh, you can ping me that I'm Justin Cormack on every, every possible thing. If you've got questions, um, you can find me on, on um, all the slacks in the universe. Um, um, and Thank you for coming to the talk. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sure you've all got questions. If I can't answer your questions now, I'm happy to answer them. Just drop me an email, Slack, whatever, at any other point. Thank you very much. So we have about seven minutes for questions. Um, for the sake of the recording, I'll run this mic around to you to ask your question. Um, so with that. Ooh, see hand. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, looking at this uh, Docker Content Trust Notary, uh, like next generation, something that always annoyed me is that there's some, there's nothing similar to like HSTS preload of images that you know are signed and should be signed, and you should enable Content Trust for those. And you could uh, bake that into the client, maybe, and uh, have a like higher degree of ass assurance of, like, for example, the library images that are probably going to be signed always. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. That's actually yeah, that is a good idea because I mean w w we definitely want you know the Docker library images are always signed, and you that that was the thing that we wanted to do to turn on first was enforcing that they should always be signed, and so yeah, I think. Yeah, including image metadata that says that you should have checked the signature for this at this point would be, a, yeah, it would definitely make sense, yeah, yeah. All right, so so thank you. This is, I'm sure, a hard talk to give in some ways because it's always hard to talk about, you know, oops, we made a lot of mistakes. But it, it's cool that there's I a like lot that's also... I like making mistakes. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of learning experiences happened yes. uh, during the process. Um, and one thing that we can take offline if it's more detailed, but I definitely would be curious to talk more about the movement from having lots of root keys to having a single root key. Um, I wonder if you can talk about that and also let me just prompt this by saying, have you thought about uh, doing, you know, using the, a top level targets role in the same way that you're planning on using this new single root role? Yes, I mean, that was the kind of the point. So you would, yeah, you would, yeah. I mean, I think it was just that the, you know, 
the things like Docker library, Docker, Docker the official images, we that that should be one thing with one one target role and one you know this is something that you know um, we we maintain all of these images. There are there are thing. It's we own this. You know, we own that thing, and we guarantee them all. We guarantee them all equally, and that, yeah, so absolutely. At the moment, they're all just totally independent. Each one is an lives an independent life, which is kind of stupid because they're they're just uh, they, they are a chunk of things that you would like you would want to mirror together. Do you want to? I mean, you might want to. You know, you you want to. Um, you know, we want them to be available on, you know, in different registries and be able to check the signatures on them. It's just, it, it was just, yeah, it's just a off, you know, an off by one error on the level, really. <laughs> uh, one issue that we've encountered, at least in the Docker uh, content trust model, was <clears throat> you're dependent on the content digest that the registry is going to give you for an image that is not necessarily consistent across multiple registry implementations. So even if you have the same content itself, uh, multiple registries will give a multiple digest for the same content, which in turn will result in multiple signatures that no will have but, to store. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of mentioned that at the beginning. That, that shouldn't really be the case any, anymore. I mean, I think. Historically, it was the case with the old v1 registry format before because the registries originally weren't actually content addressed. Um, and um, back in the bad old days, um, there was the worst security issue in Docker ever where someone discovered that because the, it wasn't actually a content addressed thing, it just looked like one, uh, you could um, basically just... Um, if you created a collision with something like, you know, the layers of Ubuntu, you could just um, you could just replace them with any content because it wasn't actually content addressed. So they they are supposed to be content addressed. I think it's a, it's mainly a, I mean, I don't know Derek's probably the person to answer this question better. But I mean, it, they're supposed to be content addressed, <laughs> and and the. So, so V22s fix that. I mean, the, 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 and also the content itself that you're pushing is content addressable. The only other issue sometimes that you'll see that the digests look like they don't um, match from re registry to registry is unfortunately some of the semantics around whether you're dealing with a manifest itself and the digest of that manifest or of the manifest list that it's pointing to so sometimes yeah. it passes right through th some of those things. So sometimes you could actually sign the manifest list, even though when you actually pull something, it pulls straight through that top level manifest and you get like just the AMD64 image and you're now looking at the digest yeah. of it and those don't line up, but they're still content addressable. It's yeah. just, there's, there's some weird semantics there. That last piece will, I think will change. I mean, with ContainerD fixes that, uh, doc, the Docker container D integration stuff isn't kind of ship, finished yet, so Docker doesn't really natively understand manifest lists. It just redirects through them, so you'd get that problem when you pull with Docker. Um, that's been carried over into Scopio and some of those tools as well. But, but container D gets it right, and container D, so um, yeah, and I think that it's definitely the right thing to uh, give you the manifest list hash if that's what you pulled. I think, yeah, I and I should also point out that um, if you have older images that are still in V21, most registries won't up convert them to V22, and those V21 manifests contained not only the tag name, but the repository and the registry name as well. So no, it was forced to change the manifest digest when you added new tags, change tags, push them in different places. But as long as you're pushing new images created with the latest V22 schema, then there should be no changes, as long yeah. as your client isn't munging it in some way as well. Yeah, and I think, and I think, yeah. They, I mean, again, a lot of it comes down to we didn't realise at the beginning how important this whole kind of immutability and the hashing and static stuff actually was, and it's kind of, um, you know, it, it is really important that we fix these things across the universe of clients and things over time because it it does just make things just annoyingly broken, and um, yeah, there's other things like. Um, yeah, just kind of making sure that <coughs> um, you can kind of, um, you know, the things 
do round trip properly with push and pull and you know, the, and things like that. So yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it, it definitely has been frustrating, and and I know you lot had have had a lot of issues with it, and and it's not very well. None of this stuff's very well documented. It's kind of um, and and you don't actually realize that some you know that some registries have different support for things because there's no kind of um, you know there's, there's there's no actually very little it's not very easy to find out because mostly thing you, you pull things and it works that's fine kind of thing unfortunately we are over time um so i'd encourage you all to continue this conversation out in the hallway track um, but thank you very much thank you to justin for having us today thank you for hosting me.